that's the biggest one so far. So Bilal Muhammad is out of his UFC 310 headliner event against Shafkat Rachmanov because of a toe injury. Did you see his toe? Yeah. If you watch the Penguin on HBO, his toe looks like the Penguins. <laughs> it does? Yeah. <laughs> his yeah. feet are the Penguins. Yeah, that looks pretty damn bad. That toe is thick, bro. I mean, all of his, t honestly, his toes are all thick, but that looks. His toes are exceptionally nice. thick, yeah. but that one is just. That looks I mean, terrible, that one's, yeah. And it's it's that, it's a fourth uh, foot infection, like staff got in that. And it's the third one in. You don't really need it. You know, you don't have That's to have going it. With <laughs> Out of all of them, you really don't need it. You need the outside pinky. Just for control. Yes. You need the big boy. 100%. <laughs> but outside that, like if this was like life or death and you had to fight, Ronnie Lott that bitch, dude. Cut it off. Yeah. These two are fine. You don't need that. <laughs> You'd be fine. Look at the penguin. I mean, he walks like a penguin, but he does it. <laughs> look at the penguin like it's a real guy. Like, look, he's, he's, you know, <laughs> look doing the great. Dude, look at the penguin. He's running, he's trying to take over Empire right now in <laughs> Gotham. He does it. Bring up, dude. Google the, the penguin's foot HBO. It's the same foot, dude. The penguin walks with a limp, but he's still fucking, you should be proud of him, dude. He still gets up, <laughs> does his thing. There it is. That's Mike's I mean, foot. It's sort of. <laughs> it's Bilal's foot. Not exactly, but <laughs> similar. I see what you're saying. You, but you see what I'm, my whole point is, you see the three all jangled up? Yeah. But the big one and the pinky one, all good, baby. Yeah. He's still doing it. <laughs> Your move, Bilal. Be like the penguin, dude. He's crushing life. Thriving. Thriving, dude. God, his feet are ashy there. Yeah, I'm, I'm only on episode two, but that show is... Are you watching it? Oh, yeah. I'm, it's, I'm almost all caught Don't up. tell me. It's fantastic. Do they ever get into uh, why they call him the penguin? Do they ever touch on that? You know, Not like, like uh, Batman Forever or Batman Returns, like Danny DeVito, like... He lives with the penguins in the in the sewer, which makes no fucking sense. <laughs> penguins aren't in sewers, but uh, and then he. But the only the only kind of tip of the hat to the old school penguin, which is like the Adam West uh, Batman stuff like that, is he did wear purple and gold. His Maserati's purple and gold. That's the only tip of the hat to the kind of old school. Yeah. I like it though. It keeps it more a little bit more real. Uh, I'd like a touch on some like maybe his dad was a penguin or something. You know? <laughs> like I need a touch on there's some like penguin blood when he was a kid or something. He, like his best friend was a penguin. I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll get into it. Otherwise, yeah. why they call him the penguin? I mean, I guess he owned like that was it the polar bear club or whatever, like the the bar or whatever. And then obviously he waddles like a penguin, so maybe that's just why they call it because his foot's all fucked up. I don't know. Some, I mean, it'd be cool if they were they toss some penguins in there. Yeah, now that I think about Batman uh, Returns, that's insane. Yeah. Danny DeVito was raised by penguins because he, he had flippers like a penguin. They make sense. He was just born with a deformity. And they're like, oh, go be friends with the penguins. And then they, those penguins had like rocket launchers on their back, if sure. you remember. Sure. Lit, dude. Yeah. Lit, sure. And you don't want that coming into the new Penguin HBO. It's fantastic, though. Yeah, it's good. All right, what else you got, Jim? <laughs> so he should cut off that toe is my point. <laughs> Ronnie Lottie, dude. You know Ronnie Lott in the game? His pinky. They're like, hey, man, you're, you're not going to be able to play. And he was like, you have scissors? Like, yeah. And he took scissors and went, played the game. Oh, I remember on Fighter and the Kid, we talked about that, yeah. Yeah. But I also heard that with if Bilal did, you know, antibiotics or whatever, that would mess him up. So I don't know. Oh, no. he You're not fighting with that, dude. Okay. So I've got, no, no, no. That's, no, he's, he's being smart. Of He's course. And then obviously the UFC is going to have to fill that in. Fortunately for the UFC, unfortunately for Bilal, as far, you know, Bilal is just not, it is what, it's all good. He's, he's the best in the world right now, so everyone can suck cock. But um, for the UFC, it's not like he's a huge pay-per-view guy, so they'll be able to fill somebody in and they're not going to suffer any money from it, you know. They'll do an interim belt, I bet. Shavkat, it's going to be Kamar Usman. They're going to move on from Bilal, meaning they're just going to do an interim title. I know some people think they're going to wait. I don't think so. The reason I don't think so is I don't think Shavkat deserves the toss shot right away as it is. So he's beat Neil Magny, solid win. But, you know, Neil's older than the tooth. He beat Jeff Neal. Okay. And then Wonderboy Thompson pretty weak run i mean i love shavkat and he's similar to 
to Hamzat was this boogeyman, but we don't know too much about him. You know, we, we he, has, he hasn't been really that pushed. Jeff Neal probably pushed him the most, you know? He rocked him, yeah. Yeah. But he, but he hasn't. We haven't seen much out of him. It's got, but Hamza, we, we still. There's still a lot of unanswered thing with Hamza. There's still a lot of unanswered question with Tom Aspinall. He's just starching everybody. So we we don't know. With Shavkat, I mean, I guess you beat Neil Magny, Jeff Neal, and Wonderboy Thompson. You have a right to the title. Shows you where the division's at. But that's not. That's not like an impressive run. I mean, what's impressive is he's it's finishes. That's why they're rushing him. Fin- he's finishing everybody. Everybody, yeah. everybody. Everybody. 18 wins, 18 finishes. That's why they're rushing him. But on paper, it's like, because what's, what's one boy, Jeff and Neil Magny ranked? You know, it's not. But against the state division, is Shafkat the best what's way on the planet? God, there's argument for it, yeah. But I... I don't have a problem with Shafkat doing an interim title, depending on how long Bilal's out, or no interim title. But, um, yeah, you look at it like, I'd, I'd like to see him get past Leon Edwards. Um, I'd like to see him fight Kamaru Usman. I think uh, uh, Jack Della Maldana would be great. <laughs> you know, JDM would be a problem for him. Um. I mean, there's guys with, with more impressive wins. I, Ian Gary over MVP, I thought that was pretty fucked. I mean, granted, it wasn't the most exciting fight, but still better quality win than Shafgat has. JDM, I mean, he's going to be a problem. So I actually, I actually like it. I, I would like to see Shafgat get tested, another test, before he goes on. It's like what they're doing to Lopez. See, I, I think they should have done Diego Lopez, Volkanovski. I'm not crazy about Volkanovski, Topuria. We've seen it, right? All right. Do you really think he's going to beat him? I'd rather see Lopez get another tough test, one more, and really earn that title shot. But now, to me, is is Shavkat the most talented welterweight on the planet? Yeah. Yeah. There's no denying that. That motherfucker is dangerous and he's a bad man. Still, that being said, his strength of schedule, pretty pretty weak. All signs point, he's going to dominate everybody. But I'd like to see it. Can't just assume, you know? So that's why uh, Kamar Usman, I think it, that'd be fun. You'd be Kamar there. But even but even then, the knockdown was like, all right, you'd be an older Wonder Boy, you'd be an older... Kamaru, you'd be an older Neil Magny. Do you kill two young lines? You know? Do you do you give him a JDM? Do you give him a, a Ian Gary? Walcott, uh, uh, Buckley? Even though Ian and Gary matched up, so they're probably not going to pull somebody from that, but I'd do JDM. Or, because the division's a tad, you know, light in the britches as far as contenders you have the old heads up top do you save those boys uh, and create big momentum for when he's champ so he has a bunch of contenders because if he beats Kamaru Usman right for an uh, interim title or whatever that makes him number one because he's going to fight Bilal anyways so then you have Bilal fight him let's say he beats Bilal and then you have JDM you got the winner of Machado uh, Buckley sitting there Yeah, because that welterweight division is pretty old, dude. It's kind of going through a transition the same way the lightweight did. Leon Edwards, older. Kamaru Usman, older. Uh, Kobe Covington hasn't found a hot second, older. Gilbert Burns, older. Jeff Neal, older. Wonderboy Thompson, older. MVP, not young, but new to, new to the UFC. Vicente Luque, older. Neil Magny, older. So if Shafgat's wins right now, he has beat... His best win is Jeff. Go back, Jim. I got it, brother. Give me the rankings. Okay. I was going to. I know. I know. I know who he's beat. If you go to the rankings, his best wins over number ten, Jeff Neal. He beat number eleven in Wonderboy Thompson, and then he beat number fifteen in Neil Magny. So he beat ten, eleven, and fifteen, but he finished them all.
Yeah, there's just it's just the older, some older cats there sitting around. I, I don't think they wait for Bilal because there's so many young cats that they gotta they gotta get that new blood in there. I'm surprised Leon Edwards doesn't step in. I don't even know what's up with. Have Leon we heard right anything? Yeah, what's yeah, he? Is he still fighting? Or <laughs> yeah, have you heard anything from him? No. I mean, he's not really. You know, he's more of a quiet guy. Great champ, super skilled, quieter guy. But Shafkat Leon Edwards seems like the fight to make. He should be healthy, right? If Bilal was able to fight, he should be able to fight. It's not like he had crazy injuries. But Shafkat Leon makes the most sense. But again, short notice. So remember, these older dudes that they ain't doing that stuff. They've been there. They've done that. So Leon Edwards like, no, no, hell no. And then they were talking about replacing this main event with Alex and Ankalaev. Yeah. I don't like that for this reason. I mean, God dang, Alex is such a savage. Dude, get your money, King. Do you. Do you. Four fights in a calendar year is insane. He's by far your fire of the year if this happens. There's an argument that he's already fire of the year. But, uh, again, short notice, by far his toughest matchup, I do – I. I do think he beats Ankalaev, but by far your toughest matchup, dude, do it with a full camp. Get some rest. It's all good. You've already saved the UFC in this calendar year. Don't keep doing this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bite you in the ass, dude. If it so happens that Ankalaev's that guy, that Achilles heel, you don't want to do it on short notice, man. You want your best foot forward because if you get your best foot forward and you're 100% healthy and you do starch him, let's say it was a lucky punch, something like that, the UFC can make sure that he's kind of out of the limelight for a while, and then you can go and do your super fights. But you lose to him. We're talking about a different different career path there. Just wait, dude. You've already done enough. It's not like the UFC is going to back up the Brinks truck for that fight. You know, just wait, dude. And he, he yeah, he's talked about. It. He's been on some podcasts or just in interviews talking about how injured he's been all year, taking these short notice fights. He's like, I'm, ne I'm not never 100%. So he hasn't been 100% all year. His leg hurts. His foot hurts. Like, all right. And then you're fighting Ank Live again, injured, compromised. You're winning. But Khalil Roundtree had some success. And Clive's a different animal, dude. Just, just recover. You've earned it, dude. Beat him, and then you're off to those super fights. There's nothing left for you there. But you lose to him. All right. You know, stick around, you know. So we'll see. I hope he doesn't do it. But if he does, shit, I'll watch. 